as the pressure continues to mount on the federal government to do something, anything, to stop the next mass shooting from happening in our country. There are also debates playing out at the state level. And it should come as no surprise that Republicans in state legislatures are also resisting any sort of change to gun legislation, even in areas that have sadly experienced their own mass shootings. But that isn't stopping the kids in those communities from showing their support for the people of Uvalde. Take Oxford High School in Michigan, where four kids were killed and seven others were injured in a school shooting there back in November. This week, students at that high school walked out of class and formed a U on their athletic field to honor Uvalde. State lawmakers in Michigan pushing for any sort of progress when it comes to gun legislation are fed up with their Republican counterparts. State Senator Mallory McMorrow says Republicans ended multiple sessions early this week in an attempt to silence Democrats from speaking on the Senate floor about what happened in Uvalde. So instead, she posted her speech on Twitter. As I watched news coverage of the shooting in Texas that left 19 children dead, I heard others say the same thing. I can't imagine what these parents are going through right now. Why do we say that? because it feels selfish to try to put ourselves in their experience. It feels proper to keep a distance, to give them space and time to grieve. But what if that's the problem? What if an attempt to be polite makes it far too easy to distance ourselves, to not feel their pain, to keep it abstract and reduce the urgency of the issue? What if that space makes it easier to avoid taking action, makes it feel out of our control like we can't? What if instead of saying, I can't imagine how they must feel, we did the opposite? We actively tried to imagine it, to feel what they feel. Joining me now is Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow. Senator, I watched that speech yesterday I want everybody to go and watch your speech. And I said to myself, we have to have you on the show to talk about it. As of right now, your speech has been viewed more than one million times on Twitter. I want you to explain why you decided to use that platform to be able to share your vision and your concepts and your position on what's going on across the United States and specifically what happened in Uvalde. So I've been in this job now for four years. I've introduced 40 pieces of legislation, and not a single one has been given a hearing by my Republican colleagues. So when I watched what was playing out in Uvalde, I realized that the only power I have is speaking. And I said how powerless that felt, because I wish I could do anything more tangible than that. And then to have our Republican colleagues even take that away from us was just a bridge too far, because I represent 280,000 people. And every time they silence me or my, my Democratic colleagues, particularly women of color who were trying to speak about what happened in Buffalo uh, or, or the murder of George Floyd two years ago, and they got silenced, it's silencing everybody we represent, and it's unacceptable. And they can't do it. We have a right to speak for everybody. In a portion of your speech, you walk through an incredibly powerfully emotional scenario that we as parents, I am the mother of a, of a seven-year-old little girl, that, that we as parents lose sleep over. What if your child was the one who was killed? The visuals that you commanded through your speech, the holding of your child's hand, asking what makes your child laugh, talking about your daughter's silver sneakers. Why do you think that that has resonated with so many of us versus perhaps the standard language of we must do something different? Because it makes it personal. You know, I, this can happen to anybody. I ran for office for the first time and kids reached out to me and kids who were born after Columbine have never lived in a reality that they could go to school one day and not come home. That, that's the reality that they live in. So we've got to get out of this place where it's somebody else's problem. It happened to somebody else. I thought that the, the shooting in Oxford might do that because it's so close to home, but it didn't. So we needed to make it even more personal than that. And we all, especially those of us who are legislators who can do something, have to imagine what that feels because parents and kids are demanding that of us. 
Your speech ends with you talking about how we are not actually powerless in these situations, despite feeling that way, despite feeling helpless over and over again. Can you talk me through what you want people to take away from that message that you delivered in Twitter? So we are not powerless because these are policy choices. This is the only country in the world where this regularly happens, and people need to be aggressive about it. This needs to be a single issue for voters. You need to get to know who your legislators are, ask them where they stand on the issue of gun violence, and if you don't like it, vote them out of office. We all have the power to do that and take the power away from groups like the NRA and legislators who are too cowardly to do anything. You also tweeted out your support of the New York Yankees and their efforts to highlight gun control awareness. Do you think that getting allies like major sports teams, for example, in the battle for common sense gun control is the next best way to garner support? Absolutely. Sports have always been a platform for political protest, for, for taking a stand. And it's something that we all connect with. And that's a way we can break this out of a political issue and make it a cultural issue, make it a personal issue, make it the issue that it is, which is a human issue that impacts all of us. So we need companies, brands, sports teams, celebrities. If, if you care about this, even if it doesn't impact you directly, use your voice so that it is part of the cultural conversation and we can stop this fear mongering that has left so many of us feeling powerless. I mentioned at the beginning of this segment that you unfortunately know firsthand how a community can be affected by a mass shooting. Can you let us know how is Oxford High School holding up? We, we know that they were doing the you in support earlier this week, but how are the kids at Oxford High School doing after this shooting in Uvalde? And do your Republican colleagues listen to the voices of the children and perhaps some of the 280,000 constituents that you mentioned that you're representing? I wish they did. We had Oxford High School students come to our state capitol uh, probably about a month ago, and I asked a 15-year-old just how was she? How was she since she went back to school? And she said, horrible. She said it was so bad. She has so much anxiety. She still hears the shots, and she can smell that day. It's so bad that she's gone back to virtual school. She has chosen to stay at home because it is too horrible to be back in that school. And I'm, I'm so proud of these kids and I was so angry that they came to our Capitol to beg the adults in the room to do something about this. And so many of my colleagues wouldn't even bother to listen to them. Senator, you're in a position of power to effect change. Uh, do you feel sometimes that you're just screaming into the void because you don't get your, your fellow Republican lawmakers to give you the time on the floor to be able to deliver a speech, not even to actually pass a bill, but to deliver a speech? You have to go to a platform like Twitter, which frankly I think is effective because you reach so many more people. But what are you doing for yourself to be able to buttress your courage to be able to keep on trying to do more and more legislation to get it passed? We, we have to. We have to keep pushing and we have to keep trying. And the reason that I'm trying to use whatever platform is there is that my Republican colleagues don't want to hear about racism anymore. They don't want to hear about police brutality anymore. They don't want to hear about gun violence anymore. And if they really cared about not hearing about it anymore, they would do something about it. But they're too cowardly to do anything about it. So they're trying to silence us instead. And we know that we have the power to break through. What happens on the Senate floor is not the only way that we get to speak. So we've got to go out to the people that we represent tell them what's happening and say that we have to vote them out of office because they're not doing their jobs. But do you think that the voters are ready to become one issue voters? That's typically and traditionally a Republican stronghold. The idea of galvanizing votes because you're voting on one issue, for example, abortion. Do you think we have the stomach now as Democrats to be able to be one issue voters? I know we do, and I know we do because in the past month after I gave a speech a few weeks ago that, that went viral, I have had particularly white suburban moms, people who are not often targeted by a lot of the attacks that are, are levied by the Republicans, have walked up to me and said, I have been so tired and so burned out after the past few years, but you have made me feel like I can fight again. We did this in 2018 in Michigan when people like me got elected in Republican districts. We know how to do it. We know how to mobilize. And this is the moment. We can and we will. 
Michigan State Senator Mallory McMurrow. I encourage all of you that are tuning in and watching to go check out her speech on Twitter. I, as a mom of a little one, thank you for your advocacy. Thank you, Katie.